And the Portuguese first started heading down the North African coast, following the direction the winds and the ocean currents were already blowing. And then they hit a fundamental problem. If you're used to coasting, heading down along the, the familiar safety of the coast and using landmarks to navigate by, how do you get back home? You can't just turn your ship around and head back up the way you came, because you'd be fighting against the very winds and ocean currents that took you there in the first place. And the realization, something that must have seemed completely counterintuitive at the time, is that the way to get back home is to turn away from the safety of the land, of the coast, and head deeper out into the Atlantic to complete what's known as a volta do mar, a return of the sea. Head out deeper into the ocean until you pick up a different set of winds and ocean currents. And when they headed further down the African coast and then completed a wider volta do mar to head back, they discovered the Azores. These islands were completely uninhabited by humans before this point. And what the Portuguese were doing in these very first tentative steps out into the deep ocean were piecing together these jigsaw pieces of the global picture, the global pattern of where the winds blow and the structure, the predictable patterns about where the wind bands are and the ocean currents they blow around. And we've completed that picture now over the, over the uh, subsequent hundreds of years since then to map out how the atmosphere, the air high above our heads, churns around the planet to create these winds that we used to trade by. And, and again, this makes kind of common sense. This is intuitive to a certain extent. Around the equator, where it's very sunny, the warm, the air, the warm air rises, dumps a lot of rain. That's why we find the rainforests there. Circulates round through very high altitude before descending back towards the surface at around 30 degrees north and south. That dry descending air creates all of the deserts around the planet. And then to complete that great vertical circulation current, the atmosphere has to return to the equator back along the ground. And that's just what we call the winds. And the only other fact that's important is that the planet is turning beneath its own atmosphere as you have these great circulation currents. It creates a Coriolis effect that deflects those winds to one side. So either side of the equator, we have these wide bands of winds that always blow to the west, the trade winds. In the next atmospheric circulation current, it creates winds that blow in the opposite direction, the westerlies. There are these conveyor belts wrapped around the planet that give you prevailing winds in opposite directions. If you want to navigate across an ocean between continents to trade and then come back again, once you've worked out this trick, it's a simple method of hopping back and forth between these different conveyor belts to take you back and forth the way you want to go. And we applied the understanding, that global picture of how our atmosphere works, to build some of the longest range trade routes of history, which came to determine the early stages of globalization and the building of the modern world that we live in today. The Portuguese completed their dream of heading south finding the bottom tip of, of Africa, reaching the Indian Ocean, and then the riches of the Spice Islands, which, which they came to monopolize. They found their way of literally circumnavigating, sailing around the Islamic empire up here to dominate that spice trade themselves. And if you want to sail around the southern tip of Africa, the only way you can do that, with the way that winds blow, is to steer such a wide loop through the ocean that you basically stumble across Brazil. The reason Brazil speaks Portuguese, whereas the whole rest of South America speaks Spanish, is that's just the way the wind blows if you're trying to get around Africa. Uh, the Spanish, first with Columbus, crossed the Atlantic, stumbled inconvenient into this continent, had no right to be there. Uh, they cut across uh, that new continent and became the first eyes, first European eyes, to see this whole new ocean, the peaceful ocean, the Pacific. And the Spanish then established the longest range trade route of the Age of Sail, which is the Spanish Manila Galleon route. And they picked up all their trade goods from China, sailed north to around the coastline of Japan so they could pick up the band of westerly winds that bore them the entire breadth of the Pacific to North America, where they could then coast down 
to their silver mines in Mexico, because at this time China valued silver even more than it valued gold, loaded up their ships with, with that precious metal, and then allowed the trade winds to blow them all the way back again. The reason that California, the reason that where we are right now, and cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Diego were founded in the first place is to resupply those Spanish galleons because the only place you can get to on the North African coast after crossing the Pacific is here. It's just the way the winds blow around the planet. The Portuguese discovered a shortcut across the Indian Ocean to then oust the Portuguese and dominate the spice trade themselves um, by exploiting the band of winds known as the Roaring Forties. The westerly winds in the southern hemisphere don't encounter any big continents. Most of the continents are in the northern half of the world. There are no mountain ranges, there are no walls to block those winds, and they get stronger and stronger and stronger. The Roaring Forties are a literal highway in the ocean. You can shave off weeks of the crossing time. Uh, Australia was discovered by Dutch on this, Dutch captains on this Brouwer route, the short cross, shortcut across the Indian Ocean. The problem with using that highway in the ocean is you need to know when to take your turn off from that highway, from that freeway. If you miss your turn off, you plow into Australia. You wouldn't believe the number of times captains have accidentally driven into, <laughs> straight into the side of a continent. The, the coastline, the coral reefs on the west side of Australia are absolutely littered with shipwrecks where captains had missed their turn off from the Roaring Forties, from that highway in the sea. The reason that South Africa became so important and speaks Afrikaans is that's where you need to launch your ships from to cross the Indian Ocean. That's why the Dutch cared about the southern tip of Africa so much. But arguably, the most important trade route for the subsequent playing out of history was the North Atlantic Trade Triangle. This was established at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution when Britain, North Europe, had worked out how to get machines to make things. Nothing to rely on craftspeople, but very, very cheaply, very, very quickly manufacturing things with machinery. And those manufactured products, textiles, weapons, were sailed down the old Portuguese route to the North African coast, sold there, and then the ship's holds were filled with slave labor. People were kidnapped from their homelands, bundled and chained into the holds of these ships, taken across that trade winds band to the colonies of North Africa, but also South, uh, North America, but also South America, and then forced to work on the plantations, growing raw plant materials, tea, coffee, sugar, cotton. And those raw materials were then taken along the westerly band of winds back to, to North Europe, where they were converted by using our machinery into the textiles and the cloths, which we could then trade back down to North Africa, and so on and so on. The North Atlantic Trade Triangle was an economic cog sat across the ocean, being blown round and round by that global wind machine and generating huge profits for its masters, for its slave masters. And all of this story, of these building, of these vast trade routes, are dictated by where the wind blows. These wind bands specify where you put your trade routes and therefore where you need your ports, where you put your fortresses. The entire pattern of European expansion and colonialism and empire building and the beginnings of globalization that made the modern world was dictated by the atmospheric dynamics and, and, the, and these wind bands. <laughs> 